great to be back with you with another program of Centrally Speaking. Certainly hope that by now you know more about Bank of Jamaica and its functions. On today's program, we will have with us Deputy Governor with Responsibility for Finance, Technology and Administration, George Rupel, who will share with us how Bank of Jamaica has been responding to the COVID pandemic. Right, I can just imagine. I look forward to hearing what George has to say about BOJ's management of, the, of the COVID pandemic. But before we go to, to George, let's hear what we have in the streets. What are your thoughts on working from home? The truth is it has um, a dual effect because once they are targets that are measurable, it, could, it can be good. But if there are targets that are not measurable and you are not able to estimate or measure what persons are doing, then it could be bad for productivity. Work from home works in the private sector because based on your, your, your output, that's how you, 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 um, you get the salary. But as it relates to government services, whether you work, Yes or no, you still get paid. A lot of persons in our government don't, really, don't even work from work. So you can imagine they are working from home. I believe that it's good for business because the persons that are home, it's better for them than the others that are coming out for work. They are more at risk. In terms of business, um, yeah, it would be good because the business expensive would be less than, than when the staff is working at, at, at um, the company location, right? In terms of utility bills, light and so forth, right? And also, it's also good for the employee, employee as well, where they can save, you know, cook one pot, eat lunch, dinner, and breakfast with it and so forth. So I think it's good all, overall. People are suffer indoors. Them have children, them have family, them have mother, father, elderly to look after. People have to come out, come work, nothing come to you indoors. I don't think it's productive because people tend to fall asleep. But when you're at work, you know you have a certain task for the day. So you will try and com complete the task within X time. Working from home during the COVID-19, um, it's a pretty novel idea. And it's something that has never been really done or attempted in Jamaica before so this this first time go around is it has been pretty efficient because a lot of work has been done but the only like normal problems that we're gonna get is like with um infrastructure such as um internet because internet speed is kinda slow because everyone is at home but other from that it's really good because less money is spent on commute and things like lunch and all that so it's really good. Welcome back to Centrally Speaking. Last time, we spoke with George Roper, Deputy Governor with Responsibility for Finance, Technology and Administration from Bank of Jamaica. He shared with us that Bank of Jamaica is a great place to work and an employer of choice. Mr. Roper is back today to tell us a little bit more about HR at Bank of Jamaica. Mr. Roper, welcome back to Centrally Speaking. Thanks for having me back. It's good to have you back. Share with us the unique experience of managing employees at the Bank of Jamaica during this time of COVID? All right, what I call a season of COVID, mm -hmm. I think would have tested everybody at all levels mm -hmm. of the organization. Mm -hmm. um, staff, um, supervisors, um, middle managers, senior managers, executive management, the board. And I think the most important takeaways for me mm -hmm. is that I have been inspired mm -hmm. by the response of everybody at all levels mm. to this crisis. It was all hands on deck for executive management. We had to um, demonstrate a level of empathy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we had to reach deep into the reservoirs <laughs> <laughs> of our souls mm -hmm. to, to come up with that empathy. Um, there's a need for agility right? Yeah. Um, because as we progressed from the earliest days through the weeks after, right. I think everybody globally was learning more about this particular virus 
and what should be the appropriate response mm -hmm. to containing um, the spread of infection. Right. And so as we went along, we were changing, and of course we were very careful. We were making sure that we were following all the protocols that were put out by the Ministry of Health. We had to make sure that we followed all the requirements that were being released by the government of Jamaica through the orders that came under the Disaster Risk Management Act. Mm -hmm. um, and so as things changed from, from day to day, um, we had to revise how we went about doing our work. Mm -hmm. And the response from the staff was tremendous. I, I would like to believe that for a lot of outsiders, right. mm -hmm. they were looking on the Bank of Jamaica, they might not have understood all of the different changes that had to be made, apart from the persons who, who regularly came to the bank. Right. Yes. And we had quite a, few, quite a few people who were impacted in that way. Um, at the end of each month, we have a lunch hour concert. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We had to suspend that. Yes. Oh, okay. um, we have a money museum mm -hmm. that is visited by um, school children Especially. and mm -hmm. just members of the public. Right. We had to close that. Um, so persons would have seen those changes, but the other things that we do as a central bank, and we have to interface not only with people locally, but internationally. Mm -hmm. I would like to think that, that, that most people uh, didn't really see all the changes that were being made. We had, we had a period of time when only about one third of our staff complement was, at the office? Yeah. was coming in to do work right. from the office. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's inspiring, um, and I think Jamaica, you can be proud of the central bank. We know during the era of COVID, and since COVID has started, organizations are basically building the bicycle while they're riding it. And we're sure Bank of Jamaica would have had changes in their operating procedures. Would you like to share with us um, how BOJ has adjusted and is coping during this time? Sure. So, social distancing, right. mm. as you know, Biggest. became mm -hmm. important and also protocols in relation to personal hygiene. Mm -hmm. So we had to put in place um, infrastructure to support that. So um, we installed contactless hand sanitizer stations okay. throughout our, our buildings. Uh, we have, not many people might know that we operate from two main premises. Mm -hmm. And the smaller one, um, which is like a backup operation center. We pretty much shut it down mm -hmm. because we needed to maintain a sterile environment. Yeah. Right. Should we have to close down our main okay. building, mm -hmm. then we had somewhere to relocate to mm -hmm. go, which mm -hmm. we would be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Contingency was, said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but but it normally operates there are normally people who are from there. Right. But we basically moved everybody out. Mm -hmm. Brought them to one location. In addition, we installed contactless temperature measurement devices. Mm, well so said. when we reopen to the public, right. members of the public will become accustomed, I think, those who regularly visit the, the bank at Nethersoul Place will um, become accustomed to the fact that we are checking person's temperature. Okay. And um, that's important, I think, in this is. COVID world and that we're, we're in. So those are some of the things that we did. Now, in addition, the working from home, and this was something before COVID we were looking at, mm -hmm. but COVID forced us to expedite. <laughs> yes, <laughs> put, so it forced put it, you. Put it in place, and we <laughs> talked about being agile. Mm -hmm. right? right. So, uh, for persons who were able to carry out their job functions from home, right, mm -hmm. as far as we could, we provided them with the devices right. that would allow them to work from home. Mm -hmm. We had to provide some guidance to supervisors because now this is going to be new for supervisors too, how right, we right. manage people who are working remotely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is very new for the bank, mm -hmm. uh, at least for most people in the bank. It is. So um, we provided guidance mm -hmm. where that was concerned. And, and part of the guidance is that yet there has to be regular contact communication with the staff who are working remotely. There needs to be very clear uh, communication as to what the deliverables are, right. what is it you're supposed to produce, when you're supposed to produce it by, mm -hmm. um, because you know you don't have somebody looking over your shoulder when you're working at home, mm -hmm. and it's easy to get distracted. Yes. <laughs> Which is true, of course. And um, if lot. you are a parent, yes. you know mm -hmm. even more so, yes. because children yes. were doing school from home as well. Right. 
So um, we provided guidance and provided as much support as we could. Um, there were some persons who we actually had to say stay at home even if their, their job function was not one that lended itself to being performed remotely. Mm. Okay. And that was because either there was a comorbidity, mm. right. or you might recall in the early days yeah. um, when the schools were closed, right. employers were told that you know, they had to facilitate um, mm. employees staying at home mm -hmm. in order to just take care of children. Mm -hmm. That, I think, tested our, our IT infrastructure, and it stood up quite well. Mm. Um, you know, we didn't only have people working from home, but we conducted staff meetings. Um, and Virtually? Virtual well, staff right. meetings. That's so good. People, right. people logged in. Um, first staff meeting was over 490 persons who that had is log excellent. logged right. in. So even persons who were at work right. um, would have signed in, and right. then persons who were off-site at home yeah, right. would have signed in and so we've done that twice and um, a few hiccups but it's gone well okay. um, yeah. we've been able to communicate to staff important changes um, through the staff meetings and again through the normal channels mm -hmm. um, through emails i see this as going to be a feature of the landscape going, going forward, forward. For right. do you think mm -hmm. that this work from home arrangement you know do you think it will adversely impact productivity and output since we're accustomed to this nine to five in the building kind of arrangement i can only speak anecdotally what i have heard from some of our managers and indeed some of the employees themselves is that their productivity has increased whilst they've been working from home before COVID, mm -hmm. if you had a meeting, people typically would walk to a meeting room. Yeah. Yes. They'd, well, they'd, they'd walk to the elevator, mm -hmm. <laughs> wait on the elevator. Which is true. <laughs> and then walk to a meeting room. Mm -hmm. um, no, you don't have that. Right. You don't have to commute to work. Precisely. Yes. Yes. Anymore. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, this is not just now a feature of you know, how we operate within the central bank. I think externally, mm -hmm. there's a lot more use of technology. Mm -hmm. So people, instead of going to a fast food restaurant, or not, not that I'm promoting yeah. eating fast food. I, 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 but, yeah. <laughs> but, it's, not a, it's not fast anymore. <laughs> but, you, but you can send a yeah, WhatsApp right, message. Right. And, right. and many of the restaurants are actually doing either curbside pickup mm -hmm. or right. delivery, even yes, yes, yes. delivery services. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that you can do without jumping in your car, which is going to emit carbon into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yes, so on a uh, global scale, we are helping. We, mm -hmm. this, this, this is a silver lining, right? Yes. Okay, so right. So with, with crisis, there's opportunity, mm -hmm. and the opportunity is there for us to keep some of these practices going because they probably overall are going to have a positive impact on our environment. So what's next on the horizon for careers at Bank of Jamaica? I'm going to mention one word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. virtual. Mm -hmm. And then after that, two words, mm -hmm. Career Expo. Oh, yeah. wait, I yeah. That sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, a All virtual right. Tell me more. Career Expo. Okay. Well, we're still working on the details. Right. I don't want to, don't want to give away too much, but mm -hmm. you know what typically happens at a Career Expo? Right. Uh, persons who are interested in pursuing careers in an organization or a range of organizations, they mm -hmm. can get information. Right. So, um, stay tuned. This is just a teaser. Mm -hmm. Just a teaser, yeah. And viewers, there you have it. Our interview with George Roper, Deputy Governor, with responsibility for finance, technology, and administration at Bank of Jamaica. Mr. Roper, thank you so much for coming again to yeah, share yeah. on it the developments at Bank my of pleasure. Jamaica. Yeah. And from George Roper, it's time for the fun fact. Have you thought about where the dollar sign comes from? While there are several theories, no one really knows for sure. The U.S. Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which is the agency responsible for designing and printing American currency, has the most widely accepted explanation. According to the agency, the dollar sign's origins lie in the Spanish peso, which was accepted as the currency in colonial America during the late 1700s. Handwritten manuscripts dating to that time show that the peso was abbreviated PS. It's believed that as time went on, the abbreviation was often written so that the S was on top of the P, producing a version of the dollar sign symbol we know today. The dollar sign first appeared in print after 1800 and was widely used by the time the first U.S. paper dollar was issued in 1875.
It's now time for our fast facts. Number one, managing through a crisis such as a pandemic requires a high degree of empathy and understanding. Number two, employees at Bank of Jamaica share a deep sense of pride and seriousness of purpose, knowing the critical importance of all the roles at the bank. Number three, BOJ's protocols are in alignment with those as set out by the Ministry of Health and Wellness, which include the maintenance of social distancing requirements. Number four, the pandemic brought the work from home arrangements into sharper focus as a viable option of work. And number five, if managed carefully, work from home arrangements can increase productivity. And that's it for our fast facts. Thanks for watching. And that's it for today's program. Follow us on Twitter at Central Bank JA or on BOJ's Facebook page and our YouTube channel. You can also visit our website at www.boj.org.jm. We also invite you to visit the careers page on Bank of Jamaica's website to see if there are any vacancies to which your skill sets aligned and apply to join the dynamic team at Bank of Jamaica. And remember to tune in next time right here on your station. I'm Anna. And I'm Chino. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Essentially Speaking is a production of Bank of Jamaica.